Watercolour brushes for beginners. That's what we're talking about in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel I talk about all things watercolour as well as drawing, mixed media, even a little bit of motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. Now when you've started learning to paint or perhaps you're only just starting now you'll have noticed that there are tons of brushes there are all sorts of different brush shapes there are round brushes and flat brushes there are filberts and riggers there are rake brushes and hake brushes it's really really confusing now there are just three basic brush shapes that i have recommended to my students for years they are the brushes that i do probably 90 percent of all of my painting with so of course there is a case for using lots of different types of brushes and as you move forward with your art and experiment i'm sure you'll want to add some other brush shapes into i'm thinking actually of doing a video covering all the different brush shapes and uh, what they're used for so let me know in the comments if you'd like that one as well but these brushes are by no means essential so we're just going to go through three brushes now for the sake of full disclosure I will be promoting my own brush set in this video but that does not mean that you can't get value from this video if you have no interest in buying brushes from me because these brush shapes are available from all manufacturers at all price points. Now what if you can't even afford to start with three brushes? What if you can only afford two brushes or perhaps only one brush? I'm going to actually list these brushes in order of most useful first so that if you want to you can start by just buying one brush and then add the others as you go along. So we're going to start with the sort of the first one which is going to be my sort of desert island selection. In other words if I were on a desert island and I somehow knew I was going there and I could only use one brush for the rest of my life on this desert island what would that brush be? That's the one we're going to start with. As I go through these brush types I will be pointing the camera downwards and I'll be demonstrating exactly what you can use them for. So let's start with my first pick my absolute top most useful brush and it's this one a large round. So let's have a look at our first brush. So this is quite a big brush and you can see that it's, um, it's still in the tube that it comes in and it's got a point on the end. Now if you're a beginner you might be wondering to yourself why is this called a round brush? It's called round because the ferrule, the metal part here, is circular. You know if you were to look at it end on it would be a circle. So this brush is made by Jackman's Art Materials who are a British company that make handmade watercolours and accessories and I have an ongoing collaboration with them. So I help to design products and uh, exciting things like that. And because of my experience as a watercolour tutor, they do sometimes consult with me and ask me what I think about certain things like, you know, what would be the best brush set for beginners. And that's how we came up with our essentials set. So we already have the essentials beginners paint set, the 10 colours that I've chosen as being the best colours for beginners to start with. And now in this video, I'll be showing you the, uh, the brush set that I have designed. But as I said, these are available from all manufacturers. This brush is handmade in Germany and it's a synthetic brush. Now when you get a brush like this it's usually in a tube, at least if it's a good brush it'll be in a tube like this, that's to protect the point and this just needs to be taken off. It's important however that you don't try and put that back on. It's best to keep your brushes either once they're dry stood up in a pot or if you're traveling to put them in a brush holder. You know one of those fabric ones that you roll up they're good too because if you try and put this back on you're likely to catch little hairs so you can discard that. I mean actually they're quite good you can sort of make little stamping patterns and things. I've done other videos about that. You'll find as well that a new brush is quite stiff, you know, it's it's solid and that's just because there's usually a little bit of binder or gum arabic on it just to keep it in a good shape and maintain the point during travel. So all you have to do is just rinse it in some water so we'll get this brush and as I said this is brand new this brush the first time I've used it and just going to swill it around a bit and that'll just remove any binder that's uh, holding the bristles together. They're normally just the same binders that you find in the watercolour paints so there's nothing to worry about you know you don't have to worry that there's anything toxic in there it's probably just a bit of gum arabic which is a natural substance. Now the reason I say that this is the brush you should start with this is my desert island brush is because it's so versatile it holds an enormous amount of paint and yet it has a very fine point so let's look at what we can do with it. So I've got some paints here these are actually paints that have uh, come out of a tube and then dried and this is permanent rose it did have it wasn't very clean was it? it had a little bit of muck on it there I should have cleaned them up never mind it's a, a lovely bright color so you won't notice 
So with a brush like this, you can see that you get a lovely long even stroke like this. Look how far the paint goes. You know, we can just keep going and going and going and going and going. And the good thing about using a large brush like this is that you won't get a load of drying lines because the paint runs out too quickly. And this is a big mistake that beginners make is to use a brush that's too small so that you keep having to stop, start, stop, start and then you get a load of drying lines. So beginners often gravitate to tiny, tiny brushes thinking that you know they'll have more control and you can do more detail with a tiny brush. But actually, if you have a look at this, especially with this nice new brush, you know, we can really, really get some fine details going on here. I can make all sorts of marks with it. I can paint some really fine details with it, but I can also get these larger strokes too. So let's look at some practical applications for a brush like this. So I could paint a leaf with it. You know, or equally, I could paint a petal. Forgive the splash there. I'm working on a board that's sloped so that you can um, see more easily while I'm filming. But if you are painting yourself, I do recommend that you uh, paint on a flat surface with watercolours. But you can see that I can get this lovely large area of smooth colour. It's also good for blending techniques. So perhaps I have a flower petal. I can put some water on with it. And then I can add a blush of colour at one end. Now if you're new to painting and you're wondering how to do some of these techniques, I do have lots of free videos here on YouTube so you can learn more about painting techniques. I also have a, uh, a watercolour course for complete beginners where we start at these really basic flat washes, graduated washes and blending techniques like this one. So if you're having trouble controlling the paint, do have a look in the video description and you can also click videos on my channel to see all of the videos that I have and there are some playlists there as well so you can explore more free videos and as I said I do have a paid fully uh, fully supported with its own Facebook group course if you are looking for that as well. So you can see just how versatile a brush like this is. It does almost anything. So if you can only afford one brush, if you do end up on that desert island, this is what you need. This is a large round brush. Now this is a size 12, but do be aware that across manufacturers, the sizes are not always consistent. They'll always be roughly the same size, but you know, you might find that a 10 is equivalent to a 12 in another brand. They just don't have consistency across brands, which is really, really annoying. But this is our Jackman Synthetic Size 12. Now, one other thing that can be done with a brush such as this is wet into wet. So we can work colors in together on the paper. Imagine we're painting, you know, a landscape or something like that. And we can get these lovely blended areas of color. Let's go in with a little bit of pink just to uh, get a bit of, uh, bit of gray coming up there. There we are. So a massively, massively versatile brush. And any product that I put my name to is vegan. And look at the beautiful effects you can get with simply this one large round brush. So what's next after the large round brush? What is the second most useful brush that you can have in your watercolor painting kit? It's this one, a large flat brush. So here's my flat brush. It is quite large. You can see um, I have quite small hands actually, but it's a still a fair size. Now, unlike the other brushes in this video, this one's not brand new. I've been using this for a while. So you can see it's got a little bit stained. It's got a little bit warm because I have been uh, putting it through its paces, but it's still in excellent condition. And let's look at what you use a brush like this for. So if you paint landscapes, you're going to find that quite often you need to pre-wet something like a sky. And a brush like this is great for wetting the paper. Now, as I I said with the first brush with the desert island brush you can do pretty much anything with it and certainly you could wet an area with it but how much easier is it to use a brush like this so let's look at this technique first of all so I'm going to wet this area here with my flat brush I've got a piece of paper towel on the side so I can remove any excess any puddles and then I can go back to the first brush and I can add in some color so you can see how this is great for doing cloudy skies. But of course, it can be used for any occasion when you need to pre-wet the paper. 
Now it's not only good for pre-wetting the paper, of course you can paint with it too. So when would you use a brush like this? You would use a brush like this particularly for getting what they call a flat wash. So what you would do typically is um, mix up a large puddle of colour. Don't mix over your work, I'm only doing this so that you can uh, see. Recipe for disaster, isn't it? Mixing right where you're working. So we'll put some colour in there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply this in a flat technique. So it's almost like pasting wallpaper. You can see I've mixed up a big puddle there and I'm going to sort of just paste it onto the paper like this. Now you can see, because of the size of this brush, it is so much easier to get a flat area of colour. Important when you're making a flat wash not to leave any puddles. And there we are. Another option for a brush like this is a graduated wash. Let's change this actually into a graduated wash where we start at the top with darker colour and we come down to fade that colour out. So for a flat or graduated wash, this brush is great too. Now if we have a really small area that we want to get a flat wash in, imagine I had you know, a petal like this one. I couldn't do it with this big brush, could I? But what I can do is I can go back to our first brush again, and that's the brush that we use for a smaller area of flat wash. So again, I just apply the paint in an area without leaving puddles. You see I've got a bit of a puddle forming there. Just going to dry my brush a bit on some paper towel off camera and then that will just lift out that excess water. Because your brushes can also be used to lift paint and to lift water from the paper as well. And while we're playing around with them, let me show you how that's done. So for example, if I make an area of color here, this is Payne's Gray, it's a dark blue gray. I'm going to clean this brush from the water. I'm then going to dry it, not completely, but semi-dry. I can use the brush then to lift out a highlight, an area of lighter paint. So you can see by starting with this brush, but then adding this one as well, not only can we do everything that we could do before, but we can work in much, much larger areas too. At this point, as always, if you're enjoying this tutorial, can I ask you please to click the like button, to click that thumbs up, YouTube Rewards channels with audience interaction. I'm about three days away from hitting 40,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. If you click like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people and I can teach more people how to paint and continue to grow my YouTube channel. So what is my third choice? What completes the trio? What is my third most useful brush? And it's this one, a small round brush. So this brush is exactly the same shape as the first brush. It's a little bit smaller. So this one is a size eight. The Jackman's paint brushes come up on the smaller size. In other brands, this might be somewhere around a six. So somewhere between a six or an eight is a good smaller brush size. Now you'll notice that although it's a small brush, it's not tiny, you know, it's not one of these ones that's got sort of three hairs. And I really almost never go down to those tiny, tiny brushes. Basically, you know, unless you're painting eyelashes on a ladybird or, you know, really putting those tiny, tiny botanical details on, literally painting every hair or every eyelash on a person, you don't ever need to go to a smaller brush than this. And when you're beginning to paint, you certainly don't need those tiny brushes. Now, if you've seen my own paintings, you'll know that I paint in an incredibly detailed style. And yet, I almost never go to a smaller brush than this one. Because just like the first one, not only can you get a very narrow line with it, but it's much more controllable. I like to hold my brush quite close to the end and almost use it in the way that you would use a pen. And you can see you can get any number of fine details here. Now, if I was sure that this leaf, for instance, were dry, I could paint some leaf veins on. I'm not at all convinced it's dry, actually. And if you want these sharp edges, you need to paint on top of dry paint. You can also alternate between two brushes. So for example, if I wanted to go maybe around this petal, I could start going around it with the big brush, but then if I found it to be a little bit ungainly, I could just swap to the smaller one just to get close in and then go back to the larger one again. So you always want to go for the biggest brush that you can manage because it will hold more paint and the paint will apply it more smoothly. But you want to have a small brush like this as well 
that's not you know so tiny that it doesn't hold any paint you know and look how far this paint goes you know we can still get an awful lot of travel from this brush it's a small brush but look that paint just keeps on going but it's small enough that we can get really fine details not only to add details like this but also if you're painting round something so if I draw a little circle here for example and I want to go around the edge it's going to be quite easy using a small brush like this one this colour is yellow ochre and this is the brush that I change to when I need to paint in those smaller areas and get those finer details. This is my third choice, the small round brush. So do let me know in the comments if you agreed with my choice of top three brushes and let me know as well if you have a favourite brush shape that you like to use. Before you leave this video, don't forget to click the little down arrow, expand the video description. There are lots of good things in there for you. You can grab some free downloadable PDF guides for no money whatsoever. You'll find details of my Essentials brush set. It's a really, really good price. It was only available up until now to students, so it's just now that we're putting it out to everybody. If you found this video interesting, you're going to like another video I made all about different brush strokes. So once you've got your brushes, this is how you can practice making different brush strokes before you get onto anything as difficult as full paintings, you can watch that video right now.